In this video, we're going to talk about five things that will destroy your HVAC that you might not have been aware of. And we're also going to tell you what you can do to rectify the situation and make sure that your system is working well and also last for years to come. And if you're tuning into the channel for the first time, at the end of this video, there'll be a link to another video with more information on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So make sure you check that out if you haven't done so already. Now for starters, number one is filters. The first thing we're going to talk about may be counterintuitive. And the reason I say it may be counterintuitive is because a dirty filter can cause problems, but so can a brand new high MERV rated filter, and I'll explain why. And before we get into the problems with high MERV rated filters, let's quickly go over how HVAC systems work. Your system is designed to handle a specific level of air resistance, and the airflow is carefully balanced to ensure optimal performance. And if the system does not have enough airflow, it can cause all sorts of issues from overheating to an iced up air conditioner. Now let's talk about MERV and what it means. MERV stands for Minimum Efficiency Reporting Value, and it measures how effective an air filter is at capturing particles. The scale ranges from one all the way up to 16 with higher numbers indicating better filtration. You might think that a higher filter means better filtration for your home and it's better for your HVAC. That's not always the case. For example, if you just try to buy a standard MERV 16 filter that is only one inch thick at your local hardware store, for example, you are bound to run into issues because this will substantially reduce your airflow. However, if you opt instead for a four inch thick MERV 13 or MERV 16 filter, you will actually get better airflow because these are designed with deeper pleats and more surface area to allow more air passing through your HVAC. So if your blower motor is working too hard, for example, that's one of the most common causes of premature failure. This is why we see this on systems with dirty filters and a high MERV rated filter, if it's not the right kind, can actually cause the same problem. Now, typically if you're using a one inch filter, you only want to use something that is rated MERV 8. That's going to be your best solution. And if you're wanting more filtration beyond that, consider a high efficiency, thicker filter or specialty filtration unit that can accommodate those thicker filters. Now, number two is a dirty condenser. Now, oftentimes a dirty condenser can cause all sorts of issues like system icing all the way up to premature failure. And this is for a variety of reasons. But basically, as the condenser coils become coated with dirt, their ability to transfer heat reduces. And this reduction in heat transfer efficiency forces your HVAC system to work harder in order to achieve the desired temperature as well as increasing energy consumption along the way, as well as your utility bills. And in extreme cases, a dirty condenser can lead to system failure or a seized compressor. The strain on the compressor, for example, can result in costly repairs or even the need for a complete system replacement. And this is why regular maintenance is important to prevent these issues. And the good news is that maintaining a clean condenser is actually relatively simple. Periodically, you just check and clean the unit. Typically, we recommend people do this once in the spring. And you're just looking for visible debris and you can use a basic garden hose to gently spray down the coils and fins being careful not to damage them and if the buildup is extensive you can consider calling a professional HVAC technician for a thorough cleaning and under no circumstances should you ever use a pressure washer. Now number three is too many vents closed and the reason that too many vents being closed in your house can wreak havoc on your HVAC system is for the same reason that a dirty filter causes issues and that is reduced airflow. Many people believe that closing registers in the unused rooms can save energy and reduce utility bills. This might sound like sound logic. Less airflow to certain areas should mean less energy consumption and more airflow to the areas I want, right? Well, not quite. And what actually happens is closing too many registers can compromise the efficiency of your HVAC system because the system was designed to provide balanced airflow to maintain consistent temperatures throughout your home. And so when you disrupt that balance, it can lead to uneven heating or cooling or hot and cold spots and an overall uncomfortable indoor environment. Another issue is when you restrict airflow through closed registers, the blower motor has to work harder to push air through the ducts. This can lead to premature wear and tear on your motor and ultimately motor failure. And this is why a better solution is often to consider an option like duct sealing with AeroSeal or something to ensure that you're getting the best airflow and not having duct leakage throughout your house. Another simple hack that anyone can do and costs you no money is setting your fan to on mode instead of auto. This little tip and trick can save work wonders because basically when your HVAC shuts off, the blower motor in your home will keep circulating air and reduce some of the uneven temperature distribution that you might have been trying to solve by closing vents in the first place. Now, number four is an oversized system. It's a common belief that a larger HVAC system is the key to better comfort and performance. After all, more power means faster heating and cooling, which means you're going to be more comfortable, right? And not quite. And we'll explore 
basically how having a system being too big can actually lead to reduced performance or even not working at all. And one major issue with oversized HVAC systems is what's called short cycling. And what this means is the system cools or heats your home rapidly and shuts off quickly once the set temperature is reached. And this might sound efficient, but the truth is that it can actually shorten the system's lifespan. And the constant starting and stopping, in addition to wasting energy, also leads to a higher utility bill. And part of this is because an oversized system does not have enough runtime to actually dehumidify the air properly, which also makes it less comfortable in your home and you get a sticky or muggy feeling. You want a Goldilocks HVAC. The key to a well-functioning HVAC system is finding the right size system for your home. And believe it or not, you actually want longer run times. And in the middle of summer, the system should be running constantly, especially during the peak of the day. It should be able to satisfy the set point in your home and should be able to drop the temperature by one to two degrees an hour. And in order to size a system properly, you need to do a heat load calculation, which considers factors such as square footage, insulation, design temperature, as well as your local climate. And before I tell you about the fifth most common way that you can destroy your HVAC, if you're enjoying this content so far, please make sure you destroy that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. It takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this and subscribing is a free way that you can show support and it's greatly appreciated. And number five is unique in that oftentimes the first four issues I discussed are the actual culprit, but because the technician didn't check those things first, you end up with an improper diagnosis and the fifth condition, which is an overcharged system. Now, when a system is overcharged with refrigerant, it causes all sorts of issues that can resemble the other issues and leave you stumped with why your system isn't working. For example, if the ductwork is too small for your oversized air conditioner, you might hook up your refrigerant gauges and think the system is undercharged, only to add refrigerant and find out that it makes the condition much worse. The first problem with an overcharged air conditioner is reduced cooling efficiency because if there's too much refrigerant in the system, what happens is it disrupts the balance in the system because the excess refrigerant actually hinders heat transfer process, making your AC work harder in order to achieve the desired temperature. And this is because you're getting less or no heat transfer in the coil because there's too much refrigerant in the system. And the good news is that overcharging can be detected and corrected by most HVAC technicians that know what to look for. And this is why regular checkups are a simple way you can ensure that your AC is operating at peak efficiency without unnecessary stress on its components like what happens when you end up with an overcharged system. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service, like Denver, Colorado, or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first-time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service, so you can stay up-to-date when we start servicing your metro. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now, so make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we'll catch you on the next episode.